Well, I was describing the Feast of Trumpets. And isn't that amazing? The fall feasts, they all represent Jesus coming again. The Feast of Trumpets, what does that represent? It's the calling, the calling. The trumpet sounds and got everyone to order, brought in everyone to order, everyone together. The trumpet sounds for the coming king. The trumpet sounds for the wedding feast, where the bridegroom comes during the night, or during the time she least expect, to get his bride, to take his bride, and then they celebrate for seven days. Kind of a type of shadow of Jesus coming and taking us to heaven and celebrating the, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Isn't that cool how much the, the Feast of Trumpets, Trumpets represents um, the rapture of the church? The last trump will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we'll be caught up in the air with him to be forever with him in the twinkling of an eye. How quick this will come. And this is at our door, door post, our doorstep pretty soon, a doorpost. <laughs> but is that our door, this door, Jesus is right ready to come again as we see all the prophecies in the Bible come into pass the feast of trumpets the gathering of the saints I love that and then the next the next week they celebrate the Jews celebrate usually in the fall for two days the feast of trumpet no one knows the day or the hour they say mm, no one knows the day or the hour when Jesus is coming for us all pointing to Jesus coming and then the Day of Atonement is the atonement for our sins. Well, well, the Day of Atonement to a Jew was a time when the, um, the year when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. And he had to go through all these rituals before he got there to the Holy of Holies. And, and to make atonement, atonement, to atone means to, to say that the, the sins of Israel be paid, unintentional sins. Hmm. But the Day of Atonement is coming. After the rapture of the church, that's when the world and the white throne and everyone will have to atone for their sins, unless their sins are forgiven and covered by the blood of Jesus. But the Day of Atonement also represents from the Jew, Jewish, and the Jewish nature that during this time is like the beginnings of the, the seven-year tribulation and all these things that was prophesied in the Bible and the book of Daniel. So the Day of Atonement is a very um, sober sombering thing you know for um, a Jew but also during this time there's going to be many Jews just like that young man I talked about there's going to be many many coming to the Lord actually there's going to be like 144,000 um, preachers going around giving the gospel <laughs> isn't that cool and so when we're in heaven we're going to look the last when the door last door is open and I had a dream about this last door is open it in comes in comes Israel how cool is that? But the last and the very last, the seventh, seventh and final celebration is my favorite and the biggest celebration. And that's the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles. You see, Jesus said to his disciples and to us that he was going to prepare a place for us in heaven. And then in, in, his, in this place, there are, there are many rooms, there are many mansions, you know, many tabernacles, you know, because we are the tabernacle of God. But when we get to heaven, he's preparing a home for us forever. And that's where we're going to feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, when we're in heaven celebrating. And there's going to be a time of a thousand years we're going to reign with him on earth. I don't understand that millennium and everything, but that is again celebrating the feast that forever we're going to be worshiping our Lord and, you know, with and celebrating the feast of tabernacles. I love that. And to a Jewish person, it's just commemorating when um, they were wandering in the wilderness and God fed them with manna and they were had to put up their little tents and their tabernacle in the wilderness. You guys heard about that. That's what they were t celebrating. Um, but they're, they also are looking for their Messiah. Needless to say, we know who the Messiah is. is. It's Jesus. One, day, one time I had this dream, and I was sleeping, and it looked so real. I looked up, and it looked like that my ceiling was like opening up. And then I looked in the distance on the side where we, we have a, a, um, 
our house overlooks the cliff, you know, and as, and as I was looking to, towards the horizon, I could see there was dark storm coming, and it was getting darker and darker, and, and it looked, I looked, oh no, and then between the storm and between the light, when it was a light shine, there was a rainbow. The promises of God represent the rainbow. And this rainbow, and I knew when that rainbow got right above my head, boom, I'd be taken up to heaven. You know? And so it got right above my head. And I was like, Barry, Papu! You know, I was trying to wake him up in my sleep and tell him, Jesus is coming. He's coming. It's right now. Right now. We're going to be taken up. And he's like, he didn't hear me because he, because I was like trying to say it, but I couldn't couldn't talk because it was in my dream. But then as it came, that moment, there was this, I felt like I came, went to heaven and there was a whole bunch of little children there to greet me. And then I woke up. It was just a dream. But when I woke up, I was like just reminded that at any moment, Jesus may take us to heaven. How exciting is that, that we know that Jesus conquered death, that Jesus took away our sin, that Jesus opened heaven for us, the Passover, he pa the angel of death passes over, death has no sting, the unleavened bread, bread without leaven, Jesus is the bread of life without sin, without our sin, first fruits to heaven, the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in His Holy Spirit. How amazing. And the sounding of the trumpets, the last trump in Christ. And then on to the Day of Atonement and to the party. When you think of the Day of Atonement, I also think of the Bema Seat of Christ. And that's where all the rewards will be given out. What a spectacular place. And then there's the atonement for evil. The evil will be judged. And the evil people of this earth will be judged along with Satan and his demons and forever and set into the pit of hell. <laughs> but then we're going to feast at the Feast of Tabernacles, the tabernacle with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Oh! I am just so happy. I just want to celebrate all the time. Every day is a celebration for me, knowing that, that Jesus is with us now. And we have such hope and glory forever and ever and ever. So I hope you tell as many people as you can about Jesus and about the feasts and what they mean. And how everything in the Bible points Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our coming King, our hope of glory. <laughs>